All right, well, here we are. The log file for the Roads Through Room game, Gabriel's Horn, action pack number eight. We are going to go through the log file. I'm just going to highlight some, some items that occurred during the log file instead of going over every single little shot and, and firing sequence. It's kind of boring uh, at times. And this has been a log a long time ago since I've done this log. So the uh, exact sequence of events is not quite as clear as it used to be, but you'll get some of the key main points and key tactical decisions that I've made uh, during the game, good and bad. Uh, hopefully more good than bad. So um, again, uh, I invite you, if you haven't seen it, watch the tactical setup and uh, for this scenario in uh, my list of videos and you'll see why I've set up the way I have. The Germans get to set up within two hexes of all the American positions. Let me remove this. Of all the American positions. So we have Americans, well, not the ones that are within the town, of course, just only on board 5A. So we've got the Americans set up in the towns. Again, to, re, uh, to refresh, we need four of the seven three hex buildings. No row houses exist. That's why you see the little gray bars. And we need all the level three locations on the hills. And we have to uh, have twice as many casualty victory points as the Americans by game end. The game is seven turns long, which is actually rather short. Seven turn scenario is actually much more deceptive than an eight turn scenario. Six turns, you'd say, oh, that's a pretty short scenario. Seven turns, say, ah, oh, that's not bad. It's a moderate scenario. Not really. Not really. Seven turns is very, very short. So keep that in mind. Again, key, key components in this game that I've tried to take into account is that any units that go on the top, with some exception, will not have a chance to reinforce or have an effect on the bottom. So splitting your forces, there any squads up here won't be able to make it to the hill. So you may take your positions uphill up here, but you won't be able to go to reinforce down here. So... Let's go over some of the log file. And we start off again from the log. I'm going to fire on this unit and encircle him. And the reason why is because when you see a stack like that, and you're not supposed to inspect the stacks, obviously like that, is that I think he had concealments on him or something like that to prevent me from looking at him. The biggest fat stack is obviously going to be what all his weapons are. Whether there's two mortars there, two machine guns or something, there's two squads there and it's probably his best leader. You know, you got, you got two squad foxhole, so I want to nail that thing first, and I do so. And that, most importantly, when I do attack it, is that he becomes encircled. I prep fire down below with a little two firepower. I actually get like a pin on him. And then I prep fire with my huge stack over here. Tons of firepower. I wanted the second attack to be the encircling attack because it's a much stronger attack, and therefore his morale level will decrease and increase the chance of him breaking versus shooting with the second attack on him. So we bust up that stack. We prep fire on another unit just to break him. Move units close to them because any of those units that are broken and encircled will automatically surrender in the route phase. So I advance to the right on that little one squad fox all to the left or to the right side. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Oh, not 1300. No, not that close. Jeez, I didn't even know I could zoom 1300 to be honest with you. That's pretty impressive. How's that for increasing your hex size? All right, that should be good enough. Anyway, zoom in over here to these units. Going to jump them in close combat. I have concealment. He doesn't. Uh, that should give me an edge. Both these are half squads. Uh, two to one minus two, or two to one minus one. Not bad. I'll take it. That'll kill him. Give me a good spot over here. Clear his entire side. That's the plan. Let's continue on. Other units are just moving up. This unit's going to CX to get up on top of that hill. He's running, running, running. He fires. He actually, he could fire right there with his mortar. Because now he can see it on level three. 
I think the LOS was blocked due to D1, so we were discussing that. That's why it popped up. He has no effect, and my units CX and get into that building right there. We have to get up on the hill as soon as possible before the Americans get in defensive positions and keep us off the hill. So uh, I wasn't worried about the mortar crew. Mortar crew really can't see a lot from that location. And more dice rolls are happening down here. I prep fire and you know I continue moving. He defensive fires guys. Most of them have ineffective. Over here is I think his mortar shoots again, maybe. There I cap I capture right here because all these units were DM'd. I get to capture both of these squads straight off in the first turn. Those guys are gone. Surrender to adjacent enemy. See that? Boom right there. Surrender to adjacent enemy. Two of his squads gone. Now he has two of his machine guns and one leader. So even if he could pick up a machine gun, it's going to be two firepower. Not a problem. That's easily uh, easily attainable. Now, you say, Stu, you can't fire the unit. Sure. Doesn't matter. Crap load of casualty victory points right here. This is eight victory points right here in the stack. So I'm just going to take this unit, try and keep him alive. Uh, don't go into crags because mortar fires and crags are actually increased in damage so you don't want to do that i'm just going to take this unit and just try to keep him alive hopefully he won't get shot got to keep those victory points got to care caress and treasure those victory points other units are just as good advance phase units are approaching different different locations i'm approaching locations down here getting close throw my concealment units he's going to have five firepower it's going to be a two two plus one two even most shots not going to be effective at all. Ah, oh, damn it. I hate this thing. Not going to be effective at all. So I'm not too worried. I actually jump him in his close combat here just to see if I can get a, a free shot with an ambush because he's because he's green. I could try to actually capture him. Uh, it'll be a one to three, one to two, but it'd be a plus one because he's a green unit. So I could try to capture him. That's what the idea was there. I want to try for a long shot. So and essentially break the camel's back at that point. Units have moved up there. So he's uh, jumping close combat here. I do get killed. He rolls a three. I roll a nine. That's a chance you got to take here also. I do get killed there as well. Not looking good for my close combats. That's typical. But um, just got to keep at it. Just got to keep at it. So he tries to rally. Doesn't rally that. Oh, God. Doesn't rally that unit. They prep fire, prep fire, prep fire. No effect on any of the concealed units, which is what I want them to do because essentially they're ineffective. Prep fires, nothing happens. This is just a mortar. And so, you know, he's going to be prep firing on guys. At this, this guy right here is actually within the range of the mortar, so the mortar can't even fire at the 8-0. Three hex range. These two within two hexes. Everyone else is concealed, so it's going to be more difficult for the mortar to hit. Oh, God. God, I hate that. And so... You know, if I activate anything on the board. He prep fires over here. Huge shot. Nothing happens. Starts to move units over. Moves the mortar over. I'm not sure why he moved the mortar over. Let me see the map. That's the same hill, same location. I'm not sure why he moved the mortar out of the uh, out of that zone. I don't know. But, um, you know, that's a decision you got to make. Defensive fire with my units. God, I really hate the toggling on this thing. Sorry about that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and the, again, when you got the circle during your logs, it's bouncing around, which is kind of an irritant when you were playing files. So let me try and slow this down a little bit. He actually prep. Uh, I final fire on this guy to hopefully get a morale check, break him. Oh, actually, I fired up here on Santos. Fired from this direction. And then I followed him up from this direction. And then, therefore, this unit is going to be encircled, even with two firepower, two plus two, two plus two. Jesus. And so that unit will then be encircled as well. He should be encircled. Not sure why he doesn't have it. Not sure why he doesn't have an encirclement on him. These units advance. Again, they're all concealed. My tanks. I'm ready my tanks to come on. I spread my tanks out here. To come from every single direction one on this side one on that side 
one down here and i think the other one's coming around about right 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 this location here why are you doing that Stu? why are you splitting up your tanks because one tank because i've got nothing down here right one tank essentially has to drive up and break this unit he's not leaving the foxhole he's not going if he leaves the foxhole he's dead it's no reason to leave the foxhole so they're not moving anywhere this tank's going to drive up to here two hexes away probably get at least point blank and minus one to hit I'm going to be CE on all of my tanks, so it's easier for me to hit. It's going to expose me to a very minimal amount of risk. Very minimal, because his sniper is a 2. Very minimal amount of risk. So, But the plus 1 to hit that I negate from being buttoned up is going to be far more valuable. Far greater chance of me hitting him than, him getting my, than me getting a snake eyes and rolling and activating a sniper. So I've got to throw one tank down here to come up. And attack this 536 and just break him once he's broken he's never going to rally i'll just get my tank next to him and just blow him up and then the other tanks are going to secure these other tougher areas probably centralized this looks pretty much broken up i have most of my squads in this encircle area the top left area up in here and so most of my uh units I have a squad here and he's got uh he's got a half squad so he's not that big a deal nobody there he's broken these guys are gone half squad and there's a half squad here so there's not much left on this hill so my tank should be able to finish these guys off really quickly that's why i split them all up instead of bring them all in one shot <clears throat> plus if he jumps on the one side of the hill or the other i've got a tank looking at him so there's no there's no hiding place i've got every angle covered if i brought them all on the left hand side over here this guy can jump up and go down and move and do some sort of maneuver i'm not giving him any chance to maneuver he has to stay where he is or he gets killed i put my armor leader with one of my tanks that actually has an aa gun these uh 75 longs over here two firepower aa i think that actually can be fired buttoned up but um who cares i'll have my nine minus one leader on top of it he's got nine morale anybody shoots at him if i fail a nine morale i deserve it my poor holes I don't care so that's the idea behind that but uh you read just your, read your notes on these bad boys they've got smoke discharger smoke eight so he's got a lot of smoke on this thing and with the wind there's there is a mild breeze and a wind so any smoke shots will affect three or four hexes so in case i needed to assault a particular tough position i could smoke and the smoke will drift and cover a very large area but that doesn't seem to be the case here. All of those guys are going to be isolated. I don't think I'll have trouble in uh, dissecting the guys. So smoke wasn't a real big major concern for me from this particular setup. I have seen setups where the American all clumps down here on this board here, which is another option. As a matter of fact, a couple weeks after playing this game with my opponent, I did see a setup where the guy clumped all of his guys down here problem with that is you're gonna have oba just center on him just blast him to oblivion and then you're gonna have uh and then you can have your tanks just fire smoke on them as well either the artillery can drop smoke on them and just cover them all and then you can just engage them all in close combat <clears throat> or or just pound them otherwise get the other other locations here and then just pound them otherwise because it's all concentrated in one area it's easier for you to assault them now they're all in different areas here. Again, I only have seven turns. Like this guy over here, these guys here, they're not going to have a chance to go over here and clear this hill. It's just too long. It's going to take him three turns to move there. And he's got to clear this during the interim. So, uh, and remember, your olive groves, very slow to move through. I think the three movement factors. So it's very difficult to get through. So essentially, for all intents and purposes, the olive, these olive groves are barriers to movement, effective movement. So keep that in mind while we're scrolling. So continuing on, we're going to fly through this. Our tanks show up. Got to set up in the rally phase. Hopefully not missing a whole bunch of prep fire. Oh, my artillery I spot up here. Artillery request. Uh, that actually may have been my pre-reg hex. And perhaps the do a little bit of damage on those guys and i actually get a flame creation which is kind of crazy uh the environmental conditions are dry i think that increases the chance of getting a flame so uh all those buildings up there you do get a lot of dice rolls 
So he's gonna prep fire and circle. There you go. There's a prep fires that encircle him. And that's all. And he actually DM'd on one of the guys. I think I like I rolled a three. I got lucky in the roll. So, uh, so they're all banged up of there. He's pretty much done. Here I join my dummy and my active squad to join to make a double squad. So he doesn't know what the heck I'm gonna do. Then I move my tank up. My other tank comes on. Omega, remember all CE. And then I'm gonna area target type so I can get acquisition in the advanced fire phase, not in the movement phase, because you can't quit gain acquisition during the movement phase <clears throat> without special equipment. And nobody but the Americans have that equipment just about. So moving up here, spreading these guys out just a little bit. You say, Stu, why are you taking Lars off the right hand side? Well, it keeps these this bazooka and whoever he's got here on this end. And I've got so many units here. I should be able to take it easily control. If he drops back, then I get up on the hill for free. Plus, there's a couple locations there. There's two victory point loca victory locations on this side. If I all send him in one area, then he can concentrate his force, puts a leader behind, rallies him up, throws him back in the front. This way, I try to encircle him and blast him. There again, there's my beautiful FFE right in the middle of the building. So that was pretty effective, out, to be honest with you. Demo Charger Man goes up. He gets blasted, of course, but you got to take that chance. More of his units defensive fire down, down here. We're just air, we're just firing our tanks. Man, this expounds around a lot. Machine guns follow up right there. Possibly DM him some more. Remember, I got 12 hex range. These are these are all the machine guns that I could fire from the hill. Right, MMG, HM, or MMGs over here, LMG, probably long range. Enough to get two or three firepower, plus the negative one liters. Effective enough, that'd be a, maybe a two or four plus one. Pretty good shots, I'll take those shots. These are all LOS shots, so they're all pretty useful. LMGs, that's why I took the LMGs up there. Acquiring targets with area target type. And then next turn, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch that to the infantry target type and small bracket that. More machine gun fire. We're gonna blitz, blitz through this. Movement phase comes. Good Lord, I hate that. I really hate selecting stuff on the board because it screws up the log. These guys split. He doesn't know who, who goes where. I jump that guy, go into melee. Plug okay, routes. They prep fire on me. He get, he eliminates my dummies. Unfortunately, that was a uh, unfortunate occurrence. Again, good rolls eliminates dummies, which is good for him. Remember that guy still DM'd. These guys will be firing up here. Uh, his best leader goes berserk up on the top after I DM those guys. And unfortunately, he has to charge me in his movement phase. And I annihilate him in M6. So I don't really think he has a leader on top anymore, which is going to be very difficult for him to recover from any broken units. And considering my FFE is in the midst of most of his units, it's it's not good. It's not good. Final fire, defensive fire on those guys with hindrances along the way. That LOS is not blocked. No, this LOS is not blocked. This hit, this thing is on this level here, but there's no hill on both sides. That is a clear LOS, people, with only one hindrance from the FFE. So that is a clear LOS. Uh, that is a unusual case. A lot of time, these walls are at second level versus first level. So they're called, you know, Check your rules on those. So these walls are at second level instead of first level. So you could take wall advantage from here. Actually, the bottom guys can't even take wall advantage, but they could gain the ability from the wall, but they can't gain wall advantage because it's not at their level. At least that's what I understand. Anyway, tough, tough place to fight in enclosed tight spaces like that. Really? That really kind of irritates me. Anyway, continuing on. I actually sniper... Uh, it does activate. <laughs> uh, I get a lucky. Uh, I get a lucky roll somewhere, and he pins my guy. Defensive fire more. More defensive fire comes. Again, switching acquisitions to the small. Bam, bam, bam. My tanks are blasting away. 
It's my nine minus one over there. And my AA functions over here, roll 12, wonderful. This guy pins. I think he advances out. And this guy surrenders. So now he's got three squads and a leader. Three squads and a leader. Oh, actually two and a half squads and a leader. That is five, six, 12 victory points right there. 12 victory points. I think we start keeping track of victory points up here. Yeah, five for the Germans. This is five kills, like five deaths or whatever like that. And then two for the two for the Americans. And so that's what we're looking at, those little dots up there. But we got lots of captured units. Uh, we just want to capture everybody, literally. Just capture everybody. He jumps, jumps me. His leader gets over there, jumps me close combat. Eliminates another one of my units, unfortunately. He jumps out. Now my problem... A leader with a bazooka, he can direct the fire of that bazooka and try to destroy my tanks. Mm, that's going to be a problem. I don't want that to happen. So this tank is in dire straits. It's over here on this side. Uh, I might lose a tank. If I lose a tank, that's probably going to be five victory point swing in his favor. Not good. Also, he can, because Jonesy's here, he can fire the squad or the crew, the crew actually, with two firepower. And... Uh, I think this is out of LOS, to be honest with you. But if he gets in with an LOS and jumps that guy in close combat because I cannot fire back at him because I have no inherent firepower, if I have uh, more than three times, and this is nine unit sizes, which is more than six, so I can't even fire at anybody. So he could literally just walk up to me and kill me and jump me in close combat. I have to run away in a different direction. So that's a big key point there. That's a key strategic... Key strategic factor in what he could do. He could blow this tank up and or charge this guy here. Jump into the jump into gully right here. My tanks can't see him. And then jump into close combat with that guy. Even if he goes CX against that, who cares? I have not I'm all my firepower is gonna be half. I'm gonna have one firepower. And then he'll have you know two firepower minus one, which will cancel the CX. So not gonna be an ambush. So one to one minus one versus one to three. That's an easy, I don't care if he's six or not. That's, a, that's an easy, that's an easy close combat. So that's a big danger for me there. Big, big, big danger. And I'm clearing up on the hill. I've got Stuart and the three, four, six over here. I've got a leader here. He's got leaders all over the place. I got nothing left over here. Look at that. I got a squad. That's it. I got a leader here and I've got one tank. So um, it's getting precarious, this area. Again, the town's looking good. Most of my guys are pretty strong. They're coming back. Down here. Finally break him. I actually broke him this turn, I believe. Probably from the main gun. And then uh, my squad over here can essentially deal with him. Broke this guy, so I have one squad here I have to deal with. And because the, he has no leaders down there, uh, South Rowling, these units, is going to be one every other, every other rally phase. So, uh, again, my main concern is this area right here. He has the strongest coalition of forces and three leaders, which is huge. So, continuing on. Prep fire. got an intensive fire gun over here. got minus two here. i got to try and pick him off before he kills me. And I don't think I hit him. I prep fire my main gun over here uh, just to DM him. Prep fire this guy. No effect. I'm just... And this squad here is just moving to pick up victory locations. Moving up, moving the tanks, getting close proximity to like blow these guys away. Don't get too close because they don't have any machine guns. Moving units up here, just DMing all these guys. Yeah, all these guys are broken. All these guys are brats bad. All these guys are broken. He does have a couple of units. Squad in circles over here, DMs this unit back and behind. This is probably going to be a full squad. So it's essentially the top area is just becoming a mopping up a little bit quicker than I thought it would be. Again, simply because the artillery landed and blasted some guys. And um, I think we lost the flame there. I'm not sure where the flame went. Yeah, the flame should have been an N8. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to it. Sniper activates, pins a guy, who cares? He actually leaves the foxhole. These guys try to route one big one big area. Oh, they actually he does have a leader. 
He does have one leader, so unfortunately that's the only spot that he could really route to. Captures a unit here because he broke. And uh, I'd probably, yeah, he had failed, he couldn't route anywhere. Because he could see everyone up on the hill and things like that. So he had nowhere to route. So he just surrenders. He surrenders as well. For the same reason. Nowhere to route. Now we just need to get this guy. Make him surrender. Remember, no quarter is not necessarily your best option. Especially in this game. So that's the end of the advance phase. It's going to turn access turn three. I think we're firing. Yeah, he's prep firing up here. Allies turn three, rather. Prep firing on units to do see what he can do. Not a lot happens. Uh, just defensive fire on these guys. Try to keep pounding them. Again, acquisition here. He blows up one of my tanks with the bazooka. That was probably from last turn. Maybe this turn. I probably skipped it. He actually gets a, a really good shot on this tank. Blows it up. Uh, my unit right here moves up in there. Uh, I think to man the mortar. Just for the heck of it. Maybe to destroy the mortar. Just to move away from this unit. And then we also try to get up here. He gets pinned. And try, and try to encircle these guys. This guy's still encircled. Remembers. Any shots coming at him, he's going to have low morale. But, you know, two... Two firepower machine guns, nothing to spit at. And those mortars are emptied, uh, nothing there. So he doesn't really have a lot of units up on the hill. Those guys are encircled there, so they're just going to move out of the encirclement to lose that penalty. Otherwise, I just move up and they all surrender. So that's not a good thing. Axis turn four. I spot drop artillery, artillery crest. Fl flies over here is inaccurate, of course. And there's the burning tank there in the smoke. Psh you know, so that's good. The smoke screen that you're having there. Prep firing on more units, trying to break them just to get, get rid of them. Going back up top. More combat. Unfortunately, this combat just bounces back and forth between top and bottom. I give my demo charge to the leader. Why? Because the eight Mirage guy couldn't survive the attack. So I swapped him last turn to give it to the nine morale leader. Now he's just going to throw that on a whole bunch of broken units and um, hopefully just annihilate them. He's got nobody to fire on him. This guy's DM'd and circled. He's got one guy, so that's pretty much a free move. That's a free move, and uh, yeah. So those guys, those guys, those guys are doomed anyway, but um, because they can't route anywhere. He final fires over here, no effect. I try to blast Jonesy right here. Tank comes up to protect this unit from getting jumped. Finally break the half squad here, which is good. That'll seal his fate. Sniper! Boom! Stun! It will recall this vehicle. He's CE. It will recall... No, why? Yeah, yeah. It will recall it. So, yes, the sniper did become active. Right? But if I'm rolling a snake eyes to activate a sniper, or to potentially activate a sniker, sniper, he's losing a unit for all intents and purposes. So I'll, can, I could possibly trade a tank if it helps me going for that. I lost one over here. This one I will not lose victory points for, but I will lose its functionality as a weapon on the battlefield. So that unit is stunned, and he will get recalled. So uh, yes, I will lose a tank. What turn is it? It is turn four. The top is pretty much cleaned up. Since this is cleaned up, I can just move all my MGs right along this ridge here on the victory point ridge and just clean up anything within range over here so that's the idea behind that so luckily we got we got lucky on the top top board so he did get popped let's go back up here okay so we're going to i don't know what phase this is capture i did get a squad over here couldn't rot anywhere capture him so the entire bottom of the board i essentially just need to mop up and getting these locations here. This is turn five, I believe. Nope, turn four axis. So I need to mop up, get all these locations occupied. My off-board artillery is still pounding. My tanks just within range. Just keep pounding away. I got a surrender here. So it's looking pretty grim. He does have a squad here. Remember, he only needs to have one building or Four. This is this is mopped up over here. 
This is this is a lost cause. All of his guys are gone. So that's not going to be an issue in terms of victory conditions. But he does have units on here. One unit broke and ran away over here. And so he did get away. That was the unit here. This guy was the guy that surrendered over here. So, but he can have, still has potential. This, this unit can control occupation hexes. Again, this unit has no firepower. That's a dummy. And that's his other guy there. And I haven't controlled that hex either. I have one, two, three, or four more hexes I need to control. And I need to stay on that way. Plop down some OBA on Jonesy. Blast them both. They get blasted. Try to prep fire on these guys. Well, I guess everyone's not prep firing. Try and blast all these guys as best I can. The blaze. I think the actual blaze actually spreads to the hex. Jonesy, uh, well, he was here out of LOS to the, out of the LOS to this tank, and so he can route into that location there. So he's pretty much broken up. I see he's not rallied yet. That becomes a full blaze. I'm not going to worry about stuff up there. The focus is only on down here now. So that squad, <clears throat> I think he rolls, he probably rolls a 12 or something like that. Yeah, he rolls a 12. Gets rid of that. Oh, actually, I roll a 12 in the main armament. So main armament malfunction here. So he's pretty much done. And again, this is one of the situations where you would want to repair your main, out, main armament because he has no machine guns. He might have smoke, but who cares about smoke? I guess you could drive. I could drive up on top of him and sleaze freeze him, and then have my guys walk up on him. But how much fun is that? Um, so he's done for the time being, and I got one tank over here. The other one's got to recall. So I've got one tank with armaments. So the game's not over yet. I still have a number of hexes to control, and I'm tr I'm occupying these hexes down here. All that's just a mop up situation. So again, we're just going to focus up here. Move units. Let's see what else? They're all just moving advanced firing. I finally break him, so he's done because he's still encircled. And I'll just get the, I'll get the surrender rate on that guy. Now, what do we have here? This tank is gone. Main arm is disabled. This other tank had to retreat because he was recalled, and the main arm was disabled here. Uh, yes, I could have sleeze freeze, but. I got nothing to lose there, so he's gone. This tank is blown up, and actually the blaze actually spread to the hex, which is unusual. But in dry conditions, it happens. So I have one tank remaining out of four. One tank out of four. Pretty crazy. And he did rally this unit down here. You say, Stu, we don't care about that. So, well, you know what? If he breaks this guy, that's pretty much game over. Because he only has to occupy one hex. So he can recover one of these hexes, and if he gets one hex, it's over. So I've got one squad to one squad. Also, if he breaks me in ensuing fire, then these units here can possibly engage in close combat, and if they get a kill, or if they aid in a kill, then they become a full-fledged 536, which is what they just were reduced to. So, and on the way is this unit here, with more units that if they break, they can attack. So that's the problem with prisoners is you have the potential of if you break, you gotta be careful with them. You gotta keep them out of the line of fire, which I've got a guy in here, right? I put him in the foxhole. Uh, I don't know if the prisoners, I think the prisoners can go in the fox. There's some sort of weird rule about that, but whether this is legal or not, I'm protecting my squad by being in the foxhole, so I don't break, so these guys don't kill me. That's why I'm in the foxhole. That's the only reason why they're there. It's like a little holding pen. It's like a prisoner of war camp. So anyway, the rest of these units are good. So this whole hill here is clear. Clear, clear, clear. We have a wounded leader here and a 536 here. And you say, Stu, game's over. Game's over, Stu. I say, nope. Top's gone. Top's completely controlled. Not a big deal up there. Hasn't been a problem most of the game. Uh, due to some unfortunate rolls, but I have two turns to get these get these locations. I have these locations here, these locations, and uh, a couple more here. It's going to be wrapping up. But if this unit gets here, we're in trouble. And you say, Stu, that's a long shot. He's only got one guy, right? Wrong. See this here, the leader here. Unfortunately, there's a tank there. But let's say if he were normal, 
If he wasn't wounded, he can easily engage in this unit up here in close combat. There's nobody here. Only the tank is in LOS. He does have eight morale here. He did have eight morale. And nobody over here can really actually see that particular location. These guys are kind of far range. He's got a half squad. and You know, he is a leader, decent morale. But if he were, de if he were in good order in terms of not being wounded, he can climb up the hill through the through the fox through the gullies engage me in close combat one to two okay if he kills me then one of these units turn into a half squad and when they turn into a half squad they can then oh this doesn't have the um new feature they can then control one of the level three locations which would be this one here so although i'm in a kind of a safe spot in that location if this leader were to be able to get over there for some stretch of the imagination, then he could possibly kill me and killing me in close combat will then enable one of these prisoners to convert back into a green unit or a conscript unit in case you have conscripts in your OB. Then I will automatically control that location. So that would be huge. That would be a game winning move for him. Same thing down here, game winning move. Break this unit. These units could then engage in close combat if I just fire on him and then I could just advance in the hex because he's got a route out. Route somewhere, just anywhere. And then these units probably aren't going to... They got to fire through that terrain there. They got to fire through the olive groves here, which which puts me up on the hill. I'm pretty well defended over here. This tank can't even see me because he's on level one. So the only thing stopping this 536 is a 248. And a leader holding squads and a 467 holding a squad okay so in close combat my green unit has a better chance of killing this unit than he does me so if i jump him in close combat and kill him i'll have two squads over here and there's no way in hell this guy's going to be able to kill two squads and i'll only have one more turn for this tank to get over to help him so if i move the tank here the leader can move to engage this unit here so there still is game left even though there essentially is no american forces left on the map None. There's nobody up here. Gone. 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 But the victory chances are still viable. Still viable. So don't give don't give up your games too early. Don't I can see it. I can see it. Bullshit. Fight. Find a way to win. Find a way to win. So I I noticed that that if he gets up there, I'll let him move into L14. I'll let him move here. If he advances there, it's fine. No big deal. If he moves there, it's, it's bad for him. But I got to move into terrain here because that's a Olive Grove. And when he advances there, because that's all he can do, because L15 is going to cost him too many more. That will cost way too much to get into and to get around. So he has to go into L14. I'll just pop him with a point blank shot because I move last. Okay. So that let's see what happens. No, I don't want that. Tank has to move up. Try to engage. Tank will have hindrances. Tank will fire through the olive grove, so there will be a hindrance, but it will be my 9 minus 1 leader. Luckily, I put the 9 minus 1 leader there, and luckily, he wasn't one of the guys that was recalled. Again, last tank out of four. Very interesting that I was like bullets to most of my tanks. We're just going to focus on these guys down here. I don't think he moves his leader anywhere. We swap those around just so my 248 can get up there. Actually, my 248 can't even see him because he's on ground level. He's on uh, level one. Oh my goodness. So Jones moves over here. Jones could actually go on one, two. Uh, he can't do a three, four. Yeah, yeah he could really couldn't have done anything right there. But uh, maybe he can get over here to you know do something. I don't know. So I shoot. My tank here just to gain acquisition and then when he jumps up there i also fire yeah he advances up there so the blaze continues over there i prep fire my tank and then he finally breaks when i prep fire my tank so that's the end of the log file there but he did manage to control that location during his turn during his, well, during, yeah, during my turn. He advanced in his turn. So this is my turn, seven. 
He broke, obviously, since my guy's here, I'm going to have to lose concealment. So that would force him to route, and then I could advance, retaking that victory point location there. So leaders cannot gain control. They can only stop control from occurring, like in a building or something like that. So, but uh, he had, I think, he, I don't know if he was coming over here to destroy me or something like that. But again, if he wasn't wounded, he could have easily made it up here on top of the, for the 247 to engage the 247. I think that would have been really interesting to see that come about. Uh, just to see a, a one single leader engage a guy with so many prisoners and then, um, you know, turn the tide at that point. So I think that would have been really exciting. But anyway, he had, a, he had a distinct chance here if I missed him with that. And let's say if I rolled a 10 on my 467, not a lot of firepower there because the 248 couldn't see him. The 467, I had two shots. I had one with the tank, one with that squad. And that's it. And that's all what it came down to. But anyway, uh, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play this. If, I'm, if I were a new player, simply because of the essentially trio of victory conditions that you have to take into account, and also the varied American setup. Uh, they could set up in a lot of different areas. You've got tanks, you've got OBA, you've got uh, wind, which is not a big deal. Actually, the wind did change. That's really odd. Again, the wind, cha wind changed from down here in that direction there to to going upwards, so the wind actually didn't change here. So we had a lot of things going on in the scenario. But anyway, um, that's the fight there. The city went much more easier than I expected, simply because of his unfortunate rolls. The uh, The hills were, were still a chore. Even though he was split apart, the hills were still a chore. So use your units as best as you can. Smoke if you had to, I really didn't have to smoke. But um, that will be based upon his setup. You may need to smoke in your game. So uh, avoid it as a new player, I would say. But this seems to be a, a pretty decent little scenario in terms of um, uh, mobility, maneuverability, and uh, you get out maneuver your opponent somewhat. You have good options. Not not really everyone has a ton of firepower in this one, so you know, you need to concentrate. The Germans did have a lot of firepower in the city, but you need it because of the plus three. You simply need it in the in the city. That's why I threw most of my good stuff up there. But anyway, uh, that's it for this replay analysis and log file. Been a while. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry if it popped around a little bit. Um, it's been a while since I did one of these. So thanks for watching, and um, you know, check it out. Check out the game. Look at the action pack. See how it goes. If you hate it, resell it on eBay for three, four hundred dollars. Anyway, we'll catch you guys later. And thanks for watching. Vesling with Stu.